To climb Mount Everest is one of the most grueling, exhausting, and dangerous experiences on the planet. Many have dreamed of ascending it, but few have actually reached the top. Do you have what it takes to conquer the world's tallest mountain? Well, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to get to the peak. This is Epic How To Climb Mount Everest. Located in the Mahalongar mountain range on the border of Nepal and Tibet, Mount Everest was first surveyed by the British in 1856. However, the first successful ascent wasn't until 1953 by New Zealand's Sir Edmund Hillary and Nepal's Tenzing Norgay. Originally known as Peak 15, it was named Everest in 1865 after Welsh surveyor Sir George Everest. It's also known as Como Langma, meaning Goddess Mother of Snows, in Tibetan, and Sagar Matha, meaning Mother of the Universe, in Nepalese. Mount Everest is officially the world's tallest mountain. With a peak of 29,029 feet above sea level, it's taller than 21 Empire State Buildings stacked on top of each other. Who would do that? That's irresponsible. It's so high, the top actually reaches into the Earth's stratosphere. And crazily enough, it's only getting taller. Shifting tectonic plates cause Everest to rise about one third of an inch per year. Climbing Mount Everest is no picnic. On the mountain, you're looking at winds of up to 200 miles per hour and temperatures as cold as minus 73 degrees Celsius. Avalanches are common, as are falling rocks and crevices as wide and deep as a football field. And then there's the biggest danger of them all, the death zone. Located at 26,247 feet, the oxygen levels in the death zone are only one third of that at sea level, meaning your body uses more oxygen than it takes in. The human body can't physically withstand more than 48 hours inside the death zone without using oxygen bottles. The lower levels of oxygen also make you more prone to frostbite and gangrene. And as if climbing through the death zone wasn't bad enough, the lack of oxygen will also cause you to hallucinate. Dope. You're essentially climbing the highest mountain in the world in sub-zero temperatures while on an acid trip. Yeah. And not surprisingly, that's far from easy. One in 10 climbers die attempting to pass through the death zone to reach the top. For all these reasons, climbing Mount Everest can be fatal. Of the over thousands of people who have climbed Mount Everest, around 250 have passed away. Still want to tackle the mountain? Here's what you need to know before you start your climb. First off, you're not going to make it to the top unless you're in prime physical condition, most likely. So start working on your cardio now, and since you'll be going up the highest mountain in the world, make sure you're an expert climber. You're also going to want a physical from your doctor to check for any pre-existing conditions that might prevent you from climbing high altitudes, as well as give you any immunizations or medicine that you might need on your trip. You're going to be bringing a lot of gear with you to Everest, including high-grade down jackets, gloves, boots, glacier glasses, sleeping bags, oxygen bottles, ice axes, climbing harnesses, crampons, carabiners, and more. That sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, it is. The average climber brings around 32 pounds of equipment. That's like a really fat baby. You're also going to want to hire guides and Sherpas to assist you. Though it's tempting to go at it alone, these people know the mountain backward and forward, and their knowledge can mean the difference between life and death. Now, all this stuff adds up. Between training, gear, and other fees, the cost of climbing Mount Everest is well over $70,000. Expensive, but what's money compared to conquering the world's tallest mountain, right? There's also a bunch of companies out there that will provide package trips with everything you need to climb up the mountain. Look at that, you're finally ready to climb up Mount Everest. Now, what can you expect? Your total climb is going to last around 68 days, with only 21 days being actual climbing. The rest will be spent getting acclimated to the environment, resting and waiting out bad weather. Remember, climbing Everest is a marathon, not a sprint. You'll want to start your climb in May. The highest number of successful summits have been in that month, as it's in the middle of the spring when the weather's the warmest. There are 15 routes to take up Mount Everest, but two have seen more successful ascents than the other 13 combined, the Northeast and the Southeast Ridge. Since the Southeast Ridge is the most popular and has the lowest fatality rate, we're gonna, we're gonna take that one. The Southeast Ridge route is the same route used by Hillary and Norgay in the first ever ascent of Mount Everest. Starting in Nepal, you're gonna travel through four base camps on your way to the top. You'll make your way through the Kumbu Ice Falls and stop at the base of the Lot's face, a 3,690 foot tall glacial wall that's part of the fourth highest mountain in the world. Lots of real high mountains over there. Then you're gonna pass through the Geneva Spur, it's actually a large rock formation near the summit of Everest. From there, you're going to pass through one last landmark on the way to the top, the Hillary Step. It's a 40-foot high vertical rock face named after Sir Edmund Hillary himself. As you're climbing, here are some tips to keep in mind. Know the weather. 
Harsh conditions can happen suddenly and you don't want to be caught unprepared. Make sure you're aware of the latest forecasts and don't go any further if it's unsafe. Find out how much a buttload is and then drink a buttload of water. You may need to rely on melting snow for water, but be careful. More people than ever are climbing Mount Everest and some of them are dumping their trash and old oxygen bottles all over the mountain. This causes bacteria and germs to get into the snow, making it unsafe to drink. During the climb, you're going to want to eat small meals. Consuming too much food at once will send blood rushing to the stomach, making your body focus on digestion rather than breathing at high altitudes. As for what you should eat, you'll want food that's high in sugar as it's harder to digest protein the higher you climb. Noodles, canned meats and vegetables, trail mix, cookies and chocolate should keep you going. And most importantly, if things get too dangerous or if you feel unsafe in any way, turn around. You have a family. Your midlife crisis need for adventure and to do something with my life before I die does not mean as much as them. Don't despair. Many climbers take two, three, or even five attempts before they reach the top of Everest. <sighs> Look at that, you did it. You climbed Mount Everest and now you're on top of the world. Literally, it's the highest point on the planet. This is probably the first and only time you can say that word, literally, and use it correctly. A lot of people mix up literally and figuratively, like all the time. So much so that the dictionary now says that they both mean the same thing because we were too stupid to figure it out. Literally. This has been Epic How To. Let us know what topic you guys think we should break down next in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe.